Welcome back to John's Films. A buddy of mine, Willis, reached out and said, hey, how do I stick something to the screen, obscure it by some trees, and let it move across the top of the water if I don't have the studio version of Resolve and can't use the camera tracker? Well, Willis, let's jump in and find out. The first thing I'm gonna tell you is I'm not gonna recreate the wheel if I don't have to. And to that end, my buddy CB Super has a fantastic YouTube channel for all of these effects and will teach you how to do this work but he also provides a link here where you can download the setting file yourself. So head on over to cbsuper.com tools. He's got tools there for your Fusion page. He also has videos that help you learn how to use these tools. I'm going to use one of those in my composition today. I grab my blank footage that has nothing in it in terms of words. I'm gonna put it down on track one here and I'm going to jump into my Fusion page. Having downloaded and installed CB Super setting file, I'm now gonna jump into my footage. It's just a blank piece of footage. I'm going to click on the Fusion node and take myself into it. Notice I've got no text here. Well, first thing I need to do, shift and spacebar at the same time brings up the select tool menu. I can type in text and choose here the text plus node that adds text in and merges it over the top of my media. To use this, I'm gonna put the words I want, Catherine's landing in here. Open Sans looks fine. I've used Gadoogie recently. And now I can realize, hold on, that's not exactly where I want it, John. Well, let's hit Shift and Spacebar again and type DVE. And this is going to be a movement tool that I'm going to use called DVE. It allows me to manage not only the location of it on the screen here, but also the rotation of it. And really I can use this in many ways I'm piping in the text to it at this point. Anything that comes into this will rotate and move with the movements that I set. I'm gonna use keyframes to set it, but I'm gonna start, let's say right about here in my footage. I wanna make sure I'm managing, so I'm going about 150 frames in. I wanna make sure I am managing the location of this based on where the, the hero shot's going to be, which is right about here when you get to the full scale of this thing setting my initial keyframe here where I want it in the screen. I'm now gonna come down 20 frames and realize that I need that to move just about 20 frames up. Let's see here. So now I've got it stick, sticking in the same spot roughly on the screen. It's moving too fast. Let's see what we got here. That's pretty good. There you go. And now I'm gonna come down another 20 frames. And what this tells me is that it needs to continue that motion this time it goes down and starts to go to the left. I'm trying to handle one change at a time. And this change is going to be my displacement or direction that it exists. So it needs to stay right there. And now if I follow through, you can see that it's pretty much sticking between those areas. It's sticking to that point right there. And now what I need to do is I'm going to go 20 the other way and make sure that it's starting to go together that way. So again, I'm looking for perspective. You can even hold your finger on the screen, trace your finger down with the footage as you are editing. So now it looks like staying roughly in one spot. It might be moving too fast there. Let's see. So now it's going to stick to that one spot, stick to that one spot. Hey, not bad. All right. And then we'll come here and we'll go back some more. And I know that this time it's going to move a little bit over that way. Here's a trick for you. I'm going to use control on the mouse wheel to scroll in. I'm going to select those points and hit, hit a little bit of them with a little bit. Really, it's this angle on the curve there I want to get. Just a little smoothing out. I don't want it to be a jarring direction change. I just want it to be just a little bit smoothed out. So let's see how that does now. That seems to be tracking pretty well to that position on the screen. And so now I will go further. Again, control and mouse wheel. And I'll drag that up just a little bit more. Control mouse wheel out. Let's see how that does. Okay, so that's roughly in the right spot for the duration that I've set those keyframes in. The problem with it, two things. One, it's not moving perspective wise, so it's not rotating. It's also not getting bigger or smaller, but we're gonna deal with that in just a second. And now I'm going to check out the drone movement. It's pretty linear. 
in terms of how it's motioning. So I'll make it bigger at this point. Notice I set a keyframe on it. And now I'm able to let it grow with the river as it grows bigger. I didn't quite get it big enough at this point. So I think spanning the width of the river there, more or less, still good perspective until about there. And right here, it looks like it needs to start getting bigger because we're getting significantly closer to it. So I don't like the, that keyframe. Instead, I'm gonna let it be a bit bigger there. All right, let's see how this works. All right, clearly there's a positional problem, but it should be off the screen right about there. And that's the next thing that we're gonna work on. So as it comes through here, right about there where it starts to move up at me. It's not really our goal, is it? Click back on my DVE and it needs to bam right there. Okay, so I've got this point and now it needs to move off the screen. So instead of staying where it is, it would move down this way some and see how that works. Oh, that worked really well, okay. And then down here, just a little bit more Notice that looks like it's roughly in the same spot. Even as I quick zoom, you can tell that that's moving with the screen pretty well. And now really the last thing to do on this is to rotate it so that it matches its position. Instead of facing directly at me, I want it to face up and down the river. And I'll start back here at the beginning. I'm going to keyframe each one of these. I've got my playhead down at zero and I've hit the dots or the diamonds next to that. Let's check out which way these tilt. So this one tilts this way, control Z. This one tilts that way, control Z. And this one goes that way, control Z. There we go. So I'll start with this one and just, just ever so slightly tilt it this way. I'm gonna play with my Z now to tilt it towards me a touch. And let's see what we can get done with this, okay? Now I know that my Z needs to go back that way a touch. And let's see what we got. Hey, that's really not that bad. And the last thing I need to add is that CB Super node. So I'll do that by right here with my text. I'm going to put it in between here because remember the DVE will adjust anything that feeds into it. And to that end, I'm going to come up to my tools and templates. I'll search for my CB reflection tool that I've added. Now I just drag it on here, pipe in the text and it will automatically reflect my text. There we go, pull the text back on the screen, bam, there's my reflection. Now, that's a little harsh. CB Super's done a fantastic job of giving me some controls. I'll take the edge softness down, I'll blur it up a touch. And I like this liquid displace that he added because it really does allow me, watch what happens, see the ripple? Now this is pretty still water, so I'll leave that where it is and do some displace animation. Nah, not really. Um, but. I just love the blur effect that it puts on it because it's water and he knows you're going to be using it on water. So he gives it to you. It's like genius. All right. So I like that. That's quick and ugly, but it's good enough for the moment. And now comes the extra bit of magic. I'm going to take the same footage and copy it right on top of it. Okay, John, you're a moron. What are you thinking? You're just going to like blend them together and it's going to work? Not quite. We jump over to our color page for that piece of footage that I want on top. I'm going to make sure that I've got, one, it's selected, two, right click in the node graph space, add an alpha output, and I'll drag that alpha output directly to connect. Now, anything that I hide from this footage using a mask, for instance, or in this case, using a qualifier, selected here in the toolbar, I can now hide it. So what did I do? I selected the river, and now I'm gonna use this inversion and this will invert it so that the only things that get displayed for this frame are those that are not this pale color of gray. And I can play with my masking a little bit. I also wanna check as I get through the footage a bit, notice, ooh boy, we get green reflections and the green reflections appear to have a bit of a problem because if it's not completely masked out, it's gonna show through and obscure the text that I've got. Don't really want that, do I? Now what I can do is adjust here. It looks like, yep, if I pick up some more color. Remember, it doesn't so much matter back there because I'm going to be covering it with text anyway. And trees should show through, but what's gonna matter is earlier in here, making sure you get enough shine through. So let's check it out. 
Now you can see it's obscured by that, but it's also obscured here. Not bad. Kind of neat how that worked. I need that side to cover and uh, shine through perfectly. To do that, I can come back into my color graph and really just make a wholesale decision, which is, you know what? This portion of the screen, eh. and I'll use Alt S there. I'll pull this over here. I'm gonna pull this one out here. And I'm gonna use this with a mask. So I can use a harsh mask here. I'll just use the polygon tool and click, click, click. This is left clicking as I'm just making a wholesale decision. I'm not even going to mask and move it. This one I'm going to invert by using that button right there. And now when I go back here, you can see I've got the full word landing that's already out there. And anything that's in that general space just isn't going to be um, on top of my footage. So there we go. Not bad. All right, you can obviously spend quite a bit more time. I don't like the rotation I'm seeing on it right now. It looks like it is rotating the whole time. And so I could spend a heck of a lot more time coming in here and tuning that here with my DV node and making sure that it is exactly what I want it to be. So, yeah. You can see what happened. I set a keyframe that changed the entire duration of here. Now, knowing that it was starting right there at about 31, what I'm gonna do is let it play ahead to the point where the camera starts to actually move right there. And I can just run that back up to 31. And now it stays much more stable through the move. And then it'll start rotating off here at the end. There we go. As the camera turns, it turns, it looks a lot better. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. Please click subscribe below if you'd like to catch more of these quick tutorials. I really like making them and it makes my day when it helps somebody. So thanks for watching and have a great day.